Hello, so I am uh, Hélène Dolfus. I am a medical uh, geneticist and an ophthalmologist working uh, uh, at the Strasbourg uh, University uh, Hospital. I am a professor and also uh, the head of uh, uh, the Rare Disease uh, for Ophthalmology Center in Strasbourg, as well as the director of a research laboratory that is INSERM and the University of Strasbourg. Concerning uh, Bardet-Biedel syndrome, uh, it's since 2002 we have been uh, working in this field. Uh, first of all, in our clinical settings, because we are a center of reference for uh, taking care of these uh, patients uh, for uh, France. So we have been welcoming many patients uh, with the Bardet-Biedel syndrome in our unit uh, for rare diseases. Taking this into account in the clinical point of view, we have also performed a clinical research since 2002 to understand better uh, the natural history of Bardet-Biedel syndrome. So we have been collecting uh, data for, for years and uh, today we have a national uh, registry that is called the Cobalt Project where we collect uh, and uh, retrospectively and prospectively uh, the data of all the French uh, patients. What is important too to take into account is that uh, in uh, Strasbourg we are also the center uh, where the genetic diagnosis is made for these patients in France uh, thanks to the Genetic Diagnostic Laboratory and to my uh, dear colleague uh, Dr. Jean Muller who is a molecular biologist and bioinformatician in charge of the molecular diagnosis of uh, this uh, syndrome and he has actually a national recognition for this. Concerning the uh, more scientific uh, research on Bardet-Biedel, we have also a very long interest uh, in this matter. In fact, uh, since 2002, the research laboratory has been working on this topic. We have performed uh, genomic research using the best tools we had and we have available. Uh, ranging from, at the time, uh, very uh, now remote uh, tools, but uh, to today where we use a whole genome uh, sequencing and uh, omics approaches for uh, studying uh, at the diagnostic and physiopathological area the syndrome. So, to tell you, we have identified the BBS10 gene in, in Strasbourg, uh, now a number of years ago, and we have been deeply involved in many of the other BBS uh, gene uh, identification, either as leaders or as uh, collaborators. So uh, this is uh, one of our, of our contributions uh, to the understanding of the syndrome and also a contribution for a genetic diagnosis of this syndrome, as well as uh, helping families also for genetic uh, counseling. We are also very much involved in understanding uh, how the syndrome develops with the different organ manifestations. Why is it severe in some patients and not in others? Uh, why is the kidney affected? Why is the adipose tissue uh, affected? Why is the, sometimes the brain affected? And why is the retina affected? So all these are, are burning questions for us since years. So we have developed diverse strategies to better uh, understand uh, this. For instance, we have generated um, in the past years mice models uh, on this uh, syndrome. For instance, knockout mice models for BBS 10 and BBS 12. These have been generated in Strasbourg in collaboration with Strasbourg uh, Mouse Clinical uh, Institute, uh, which is very much involved with many international uh, programs. So these mice have been, for instance, uh, useful to understand the physiopathology of the retinal uh, degeneration and how we can address by many or diverse ways, pharmacological ways, but also gene therapy ways uh, to alleviate uh, the retinal degeneration. So this is one topic we are uh, working on. We are also trying to model uh, not only with um, animal models, but also with cellular models, 
either fibroblasts of the patients or fibroblasts of the patients that are now uh, taken into what we call iPS cells and derived in organoids to better understand at the level of the cell, but starting from uh, cells, human uh, controls, or from patients uh, to understand at the best the pathogenesis and how we can also address uh, in each organ uh, the different uh, treatment uh, approaches. We have been involved in phase three uh, clinical trials for Bardavidol, for instance, with the set melanotid trials uh, addressing uh, obesity. So overall, I would say that we cover a wide range of uh, clinical and scientific uh, research uh, on Bardavidol. We are very much involved also in many international collaborations. We are always ready uh, to uh, collaborate uh, with other groups and we are delighted uh, with, with this. And some collaboration are also ongoing. For instance, with the Institut Imagine in, uh, in Paris, uh, where we are working on uh, uh, urines of, uh, and the nephrology aspects of, uh, of uh, the syndrome with uh, 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 Professor Sophie Sonnier from uh, Imagine Institute. We are really glad to participate to this uh, initiative of the International uh, Bardet Bidel uh, Consortium to show uh, that uh, in Strasbourg uh, we are really uh, glad and happy uh, also to collaborate uh, with uh, the French uh, Patient uh, Association driven by uh, Mrs. Uh, Eloi, who is uh, very active in uh, developing uh, uh, information, communication to the patient, but also in supporting uh, research. And we would like to thank her deeply uh, for her involvement and all the patients uh, that are really uh, working with us. So uh, from Strasbourg, we have set a consortium uh, funded by uh, the French institutions of research with various partners to address how we can solve unsolved cases of patients with retinal uh, ciliopathies. So we are uh, a number of uh, groups collaborating together, the Imagine Institute, the Strasbourg uh, uh, group, but also very uh, importantly, people who are involved in uh, development of retinal organoids. So for instance, very important partners such as Vicky Kalatsis uh, in a research institute in Montpellier, but also and also very importantly, uh, the Institut de la Vision in Paris with Olivier uh, Gouraud and Denise Dalcara, who are uh, really uh, collaborating and working with us, uh, especially on the development uh, of uh, the retinal organoids. My name is uh, Olivier Gouraud. I'm a research director here at the Vision Institute. I'm leading a group uh, who's working on the uh, prevalent stem cell. And we use the prevalent stem cell to um, try to make some uh, retinal cells to understand and to treat the retinal disease. And our main uh, subject in the field is the what we call the retinal organoids. And what are the organoids? It's um, like a mini 3D retinal tissue uh, that we can uh, make in the dish starting from the prepotent stem cell uh, by uh, just modulating uh, the different culture mediums uh, with different factors uh, with the idea to reproduce exactly what's going on during the normal retinal development and uh, at the end meaning at the end it's after uh, 200 days in cultures we have some uh, structure in the dish that uh, resume to the uh, normal uh, retina with the photoreceptors uh, with the other segments and uh, uh, this uh, retinal uh, tissue recapitulates uh, the structures uh, and the different layer of the retina and how we can use them uh, to uh, for the retinal disease the first thing is uh, we can use the organoid as a source of cell that we can transplant for the patient in the futures uh, with the uh, idea to replace the photoreceptors that are lost uh, in many diseases and particularly in inherited retinal dystrophy like the retinitis pigmentosa but also uh, uh, people affecting with the Bardet-Biddle syndrome and the second uh, strategy is since we use a prepotent stem cell then we can generate the prepotent stem cell from the patient uh, from blood uh, uh, sample or for a skin biopsy uh, we can uh, transform the cell as a new uh, prepotent stem cell 
and this cell still carry the mutation and then uh, we can generate the organoids and the organoids have the mutation okay and then uh, we can look at the phenotype of the organoids and for example in the patient that are affected by retinal disease and retinal pigmentosa what we can see in the organoid is the death of the photoreceptors and then uh, we can recapitulate in the dish in the organoids exactly what's appear in the patient, the loss of the photoreceptors, then rods and cones. And based on that, uh, we can use the organoid to try to understand the mechanism underlying the photoreceptor cell death. And the second uh, strategy is to use the organoids to develop new uh, innovative therapy. For example, the gene therapy. Can we uh, just bring back a new copy of the gene of interest uh, to restore the normal phenotype? This is uh, uh, one of the main axes uh, we follow uh, in our group. Uh, based on our expertise on the retinal organoids, then we are part of the consortium uh, with the group of Denise Alcara here in the Vision Institute and the group of uh, Ellen Dolfus uh, in Strasbourg uh, about the, the understanding of the Bardet Beetle syndrome uh, phenotype uh, regarding the, uh, the retina. And for that, then we uh, have some uh, IPS cell from patient uh, with the ID to derive the IPS of this patient uh, into the retinal organoids and to see if we uh, can uh, recapitulate the phenotype uh, we can see in the patient, meaning uh, the uh, photoreceptor cell death. The important point of this consortium is that we compare both uh, the retinal organoids and the uh, animals models developed by the group of uh, uh, Professor Dolfus in Strasbourg to see if we can match or translate uh, the retinal phenotype between the mice and the, the retinal organoids in the human context uh, uh, in the dish. We are also very grateful for this uh, funding. Uh, because this consortium is working very hard uh, to solve uh, the coelopathies with retinal degenerations that are unsolved. Thank you very much indeed.